Hey everyone, it's Joan as Ask Me Automator. And uh, have you ever tried to identify one of those strange keys on your keyboard? It, we actually had this little thing earlier and Isaiah showed me something I honestly had never, even though I've worked through the demo, I hadn't done it before. And if you stick around at the end, you're gonna see just how easy it is to determine what auto hotkey needs to see in order to trigger like a hotkey. Yeah, that is right. So in our case, uh, can you explain what your problem was? So I could yeah, go sure. ahead and- So let me see if I can hold my keyboard up. <laughs> I can't quite, but um, I had other keys up here that, you know, that they're not even, there's no name to them and I didn't know what they were. And I was trying to figure out, can I use that key as a hot key? Yeah. And I remembered on the forum, there's a, an arbitrary thing, talk about all this crap. Um, but you showed me, you're like, well, you can just do this. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Yeah. So let me, you can share your screen. We can see it on your computer directly because there we can see what is going on. Now, first of all, whenever you create a hot uh, a script, there is a hidden window, uh, which when you double click on that script, it brings up some options. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. What we just created here is a little script that has this directive install keyboard hook. I'm going to explain why we need that in a second, but if you run the script. So I'm going to launch it. Right now. So if you right click on that, on the, on the script icon, you have this open menu uh, item that what it does, it brings up the hidden hot, uh, the hidden window. That I just we double click it is what I always do. That's but... another way of doing it. Yes. Now here you have an option where it says view. And it says key history and script info. Now, this is what I showed you. I told you, oh, but you can just type a key and the key is gonna be show is gonna show up here. No, I'm gonna hit the letter um, H and then I'm gonna hit F5 to refresh. Right. So we now you will see your keyboard history. Um, the one at the bottom being the newest one. So the F5 is the last one that you pressed and the right. other ones up top. Now, for each key that you press, you should see two instances down and up, except for some special keys like the F5, you just saw the down. The down. So some keys do not send the up event or something like that. So for each key, you get two events, one down and one up. Now, there is some information here that is being shown on the left, the VK and SC columns. Those are different numbers. The VK is referring to the virtual key and the SC is referring to the scan code. Later on, we will talk about what they are, but in general, this you can use to identify a key. Now, virtual keys, for example, the enter key, you have two keys on your keyboard that are enter, the numpad enter and the normal enter. Both of them in the end will result in an enter key. Well, both yeah. of them. So you can you can test that. I'm going to do so, the numpad first, and then my normal enter. Right. If you hit F5, what is going to happen is that you will get all of this zero D here, and that means that zero D is the virtual enter key. So the OS for the OS, you hit enter. Doesn't matter we, where you hit it from. It's just that you hit enter. That's what it means. Now the scan code is special because this one is the one that identifies where in your keyboard, where exactly did it came from. The 11C came from the numpad and the 01C came from the enter key. So usually the scan code is a little bit more- uh, uh, Granular or- Yeah, it is. It is it, but, well, just think about it this way. The scan code is your physical mapping. Where from the keyboard came that key? Now the V key, which the VK is just like what the uh, OS is interpreting from it. Well, it is interpreting an enter key. Doesn't matter where from, but it's an enter key. That's it. Yeah. So in this case, we can use this to figure out what your keyboard is doing when you press that key. And <laughs> it so just happens that when you did it, if you go ahead and do that, what can you go ahead and press that mysterious key on your keyboard? Sure. Let's see what it, what happened there. I hit it and then F5. F5. And you get this backspace. So yeah. basically, even though, and, and actually, if you hit the backspace on your keyboard, can you go ahead and hit the normal backspace on your keyboard? And hit I enter. I the enter key, my bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah. So F5, I think I hit it twice, but. Um, right. 
So you have this one here. I assume this is the mysterious key on your keyboard. And this one is your backspace on your keyboard. So somehow both keys are mapping to exactly the same thing. So the OS has no way of determining whether you click one or the other. That means that if I create a backspace hotkey, it doesn't matter if I hit it on my mysterious key or if I hit my backspace key, both will behave the same. Because for the OS, they are exactly the same key. For them, there is no difference between them. So in this case, that uh, answering your question that you had at that time, like, can I assign a hotkey for this thing? Well, no, if you do that, you will lose your backspace uh, uh, <laughs> on your... However, and we can see it right here on the screen, I could assign one to my numpad enter and it because this, They're different, yeah. this is different than this, right? That yes. They all see this zero D. Zero Z, but yeah. you can actually do that. And, and, and basically in auto hotkey, I don't know if you have noticed that you can, you can send the alt, the, the left alt key and the right alt key and the left control key and the right control right. key. The reason for that is because of the scan keys. When they are both alt keys, but the scan key would be different from one from, than from the other. That's what is going on. Now, the funny thing about this whole thing is that you can create a hotkey just with that number and we can try it. Well, that's yeah. what I was gonna say was yeah. <laughs> the other letters and stuff, they're basically mapped for a lack of better term so we don't have to go look up those codes. Right. right. They're aliases. This is an alias of that guy. That's what is going on. So, right. so you don't have to actually look that up. But in the case of a mysterious key, and especially if the scan code does not return an, a, a key name in here, right. it might happen. In this case, right. in this instance, it didn't happen. But if it happens, then you can grab that code. You can copy that. Yeah. So let's actually, I'm going to. Wow. Oh, it's the resolution. Right. Um, okay. This clipping tool won't won't good, but it's okay. So it's uh uh oh I can this is an actual thing I can this do. is the backspace. Right, yes. You so, can copy that and paste it. I'm gonna paste it. We'll lose that, lose that, and break these onto different lines. And so right. So if it is a VK, you can go ahead and just put VK, which is Okay. And usually the virtual keys are usually two digits. I haven't seen a VK that is longer than that. Okay. And the SC are usually three digits. Now, if you use the VK and then you put the double colon to create a hotkey, you basically created a hotkey. So right now, if you say message box VK, for example, um, and we can comment out the first one, like the second one, the SC for now, we can comment that out. But right now, what, it, what you're definitely doing is just creating a hotkey with your backspace key. And what is going to happen is that when you hit your backspace key, um, what it's going to do is that it's going to show up with this particular uh, message box. Let's see. There it is. There you go. <laughs> so that, there you go. Now, now, here's the interesting thing. Let's try this. Comment that out and create backspace. No, no comment that, that also out. And let's create a hotkey with back, just type backspace colon colon and, and and try to do it twice. Like just just remember. I think that auto hotkey doesn't create doesn't allow you to create oh, like the same. Hot yeah, yeah. Auto right, hotkey doesn't allow you. Right. Yeah. right. It, it will not even. Yeah. It, it will say duplicate hotkey. Right. But, but when we're doing this VK code and the SC right. code, it, it will work. It actually works. So, so let's see. I should have changed. Oh, actually, that has. Yeah, because that's the SC. VK. Yeah. So, but let's say. Um, oh, and of physical, course, physical. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so this one is backspace, right? So relaunch. Uh, and now I'm going to hit backspace. So now, backspace is the one that is launching, even though you have two hotkeys with the right. same thing. But backspace has precedence. And let me explain why. Let's go ahead and remove line nine. We don't need it. Well, hold on. Now. I'm going to run all three. <laughs> I think the the... The SC, the scan code, is the highest presence. And that's what I was going to just go ahead to explain. I spoiled explain. it. Okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so basically what is going on is that scan codes have higher precedence than, than 
uh, the other versions of the hotkey. You can have three different hotkeys. They're all pointing at the same thing. So our hotkey decides, okay, which one is the one that I'm going to use? And scan codes will always go first, then the aliases, and then the virtual key. The reason for the virtual key being the last one is because if you go back to the window that we had a little while ago, right, so... Oh, I got to Right, yeah, you have to reopen it. Just hit enter and numpad enter, please. Oh, sorry. Enter, numpad enter. Enter. Numpad enter. Okay. And then refresh. So Scan. now notice that even though you hit two different keys, the virtual key right. is the same. So that has the least precedence because we cannot really identify which one is which one with a virtual key. With virtual keys, just it's just kind of like semantics. When you say this is important, well, it's the same. It's, it's, anything can be important. Well, anything can be an enter key. It's an enter key. So it, I, you just send me an enter. I don't know where from or which key you pressed, but in general, that's what is going on. So the V case is the least important one. The alias, which is typing it backspace or numpad enter is secondary and the uh, scan code would be the best way to identify a key. Yeah, now, so generally speaking, what we really yeah. should be teaching people is to use, well, uh, uh, unless there's the obvious use. Right, the, of course. Right, yeah. Now, we're talking about scan codes in the in the sense of, you know, mysterious key. So it is a key that right. AutoHotKey doesn't know. Your keyboard has this weird thing right. that you don't know what it is. You can go ahead and take a look at it. And if it has a scan code that is different from other scan codes, um, you will you will definitely be able to target it that way. Now we actually forgot to mention our little secret here, right? <laughs> All yeah. the word uh, directive is needed because without it, the script doesn't actually monitor. First off, there was nothing in here; it would have exited. You know, it would have tried to yeah. run an exit. But this right. says, "Hey, stay running, but also watch that. monitor yeah. monitor your keyboard." So the 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 keyboard hook is needed because without it, AutoHotKey cannot trigger or, or be aware of the events that the keyboard is sending to the OS. That's what is going on. Every time you press a key, as I mentioned before, you have an event when you pull it, push it down and an event when you pull it up. So if you don't have this keyboard hook, unless it is a hotkey, because hotkeys are registered in a different way, so when you register a hotkey, so right now, if you create a hot, uh, a, a script that has control T in it, your hotkey is going to work, but out of hotkey is not yeah, aware, right. right. But it is registered as a hotkey in the operating system. That's what is going on. Right. But if you want auto hotkey to be aware of every time you press a keyboard and something, what you would need is a keyboard hook. And uh, that's why we will, we were able to see the keyboard history as we were doing it in that particular section of the script. So I think that <laughs> helps, yeah, helps in certain situations in which you might need to identify stuff really quickly. Yeah, what, what I love is, so everyone watching this video, now you've, you've got some great skills, go map a key that you didn't have something mapped to before, it's a mystery key, and then yeah. comment in here, what the SC code was, and also, you know, give us a, an explanation of what it is. Maybe mention the type of keyboard or something as well, just for fun. Yeah, that just, just for fun. That's good. It's pretty amazing. I have, uh, I'd say, 15 at least, maybe more extra keys on this keyboard um, that aren't, you know, tied to anything directly. And it's, I, I used to have it where I had a lot of them tied to stuff, and then I stopped using them and just forgot them. But it is, it's really, it's like having the Elgato thing, right? You don't have the visual reminder, but being able to apply something to that hotkey is really cool, so. Yeah, let me let me uh, mention something real quickly. And this is the interesting thing about, and I'm sharing my screen real quick here for, uh, sorry, this one. There are some times that on your keyboard, you have these weird keys that, launch an app. In my case, that was the calculator app. And the name for it is launch app two. Okay. So if I press this weird 
keys on my keyboard, you will notice, and I think AutoHotKey did a very good job of it, that you can use this as an alias to create a hotkey for okay, it. Cool. Nice. But this is the interesting thing. These codes, it doesn't matter which keyboard they're in, they must be the same always. So whenever you send this key code from a, from if you purchase a keyboard that have, it doesn't matter which language that keyboard is in. If you have a language, a keyboard in another language, whenever you press those type of buttons, they will send the same exact uh, uh, scan code. So, so making Jean Lalonde happy, because this is what <laughs> we've talked to him about stuff, is it sucks when you do something based off of the word, and then you do something in a language, and that word is different, right? To your point, use the SC code because it's independent of that language of the name. It is totally language. independent. Yeah. It's totally yeah. independent. That's right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's a, it's a very excellent point. Yeah. Yep. All right, everyone, remember, write it in below. I want to see it. <laughs> there you go.